When we ordered our RV over 11 years ago, a 2000 watt modified sine wave inverter charger was standard equipment. Since we have a lot of sensitive gear on board, we custom ordered a 2800 watt pure sine wave model instead. It's worked pretty well, but we've been having a couple of issues we wanted to address. First, we sometimes get a fault light when large loads come on while we're using the generator. This can cause the power to drop out for a second or two. It comes right back on, but the interruption can be enough to cause our modem and router to reset and the battery charger to switch prematurely out of bulk charge mode. It sometimes does the same thing when switching between generator, shore, and inverter power. None of this is a problem if you don't have a cabinet full of electronics that often need to stay powered up and connected to the internet without interruption. But for us, it can sometimes be annoying. Second, we want to be able to take advantage of technology and feature updates, and the circuitry in this unit is too old to allow that. Other than the occasional minor blips, our original inverter has worked fine the vast majority of the time, so we haven't been in any hurry to replace it. While we were in the process of deciding what, if anything, to do, Xantrex asked us if we'd be willing to try out one of their new generation Freedom SW inverter chargers. Our first RV, a 2002 Bounder diesel, had a 2000 watt Xantrex inverter charger and it performed perfectly during the two years we owned it. And since Numar is now equipping high-end coaches with Xantrex units as standard equipment, we were confident in making the switch too. So today we're replacing our old unit with a brand new Xantrex 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter charger, along with a system control panel and a little secret that makes the upgrade a lot easier. More on that in a minute. We're looking forward to the following benefits. 3000 watts versus 2800 in our old unit. A 150 amp battery charger versus 125 amps. The ability to optimize the charging cycle for our AGM batteries. Automatic additional power coming from the battery bank if the generator needs help under high loads. This feature requires the optional AGS module, which we'll be installing in an upcoming video. And of course, no more power blips when we switch modes. Because every installation is different, we won't be providing step-by-step -step instructions. This project also requires just enough confidence and experience as a DIY RVer that anyone considering doing it will likely not need our help anyway. Since the new inverter is almost a direct replacement for the old one, it's not that the job is that difficult, but working with electricity always requires that extra layer of caution. We turned off every possible source of power before starting this project, including shore power at the pedestal, battery cutoffs for both the house and chassis batteries, solar panels, onboard circuit breakers, the 120 volt power outlet from the generator, and the main 12 volt ground wire to the entire RV. We weren't taking any chances. We found it easiest to extend the 120 volt wiring with an additional length of Romex and install two junction boxes. That made it easy to install the wiring, with the only downside being when it's time to tidy up all the cables, we'll have a little extra Romex to twist up into place on the ceiling. Crawling around in tight basement quarters is a little challenging, but it turns out that our biggest concern, lifting the new 70 pound unit into place, was anticlimactic. It down. Okay, you ready? Yep. Not that bad. Okay, we're, we're safe. We're in. We're in. We did it. We did it. Got a high five on that one. <laughs> Another part of the installation that could have been a real challenge turned out to be incredibly simple because of that little secret we referred to earlier. Our old system used a four-wire cable to connect the control panel to the inverter. But Xantrex uses six wires to spare us the trouble of running a brand new cable from our overhead compartment all the way down to the inverter. They offer these clever network cable adapters, which made switching to Xantrex a breeze. To use the new controller with the existing four-wire cable, we simply unplug the old one Attach the red adapter 
and plug the other end into the new panel. Down at the inverter, we simply connect the black adapter in line between the other end of the four wire cable and the new inverter. Since running new cable from one part of the RV to another can be a real hassle, this is a brilliant solution. We've been putting our new inverter charger to the test for about a week now, and so far it's performed flawlessly. We've tried making it drop out or fault, and no matter how large or sudden a load we put on it, or how many times we switch from shore to generator to inverter power and back again, our electronics never miss a beat. And the AC output has been rock solid in all modes. We'll be continuing to test the system and we'll report back soon with an update, along with the installation of our AGS. All I need so now is a clean wet cloth, about one -tenth of the power like this. Just wipe the toothpaste and stay nice and cool too. completely off the headlight. On the RV using automotive style round Voila, is a clean and minty fresh. No since the original factory protective coating has long since worn off these lenses, they're going to haze over again. The only easy. way to prevent that would be to apply a protective 